Okay, everybody, we are going to start talking about the save device in this tutorial in UEFN. So Creative 2.0 save device is available. It's the first iteration of it, so I expect it will change. It's not available much in verse, but we do have the ability to use triggers with. So I've got two triggers here. The up arrow means that we're going to be saving data to the cloud and the down one is for loading it in. I have one more trigger over here, which does the clearing of data. So if I step on this, we can see we've got a little bit of a light show and this is to give me feedback in the game that the player has cleared the data. I also have a print showing up at the top. You can kind of see that. And that tells us that uh, the information for this player has cleared. I'll show you how I set that up in a second. The load and save ones are very important. So let's go ahead and grab a coin and we'll grab a gun. I've just made this basic little uh, pathway. This is a checkpoint. So we want to keep that in mind as well. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to save here. It can auto save, but I kind of think that manually saving is one of those things that we're probably going to do. So save the data there and then we'll end the game and then come back into it. So when we come back into it, we're still on a spawn pad. Nothing, nothing has changed. Nothing visibly has changed in the game here until we go over to the load trigger. So we're going to load and we see we've teleported over to our checkpoint. We've got our pistol and we have our gold coins and bullets. So the load and save functionality works just fine. If we were to go over here, this would then clear all that data out of there so that if we come back in, so we'll end the game again and start it up again. And so this is the same thing if you were to uh, on again or you just come back after a few days. We can see if even if we hit the load, we don't have anything because we cleared it, but we'd have to go back and go pick up our coins and pick up our guns and make it to our checkpoint and stuff like that. And there's other things in here. I've also got um, some health over here, right here. So we picked up that as well. And then we go to save it there and then we'll end it and start it up again. Uh, we can see we've got nothing until we go and load in our stuff and we can see that we've got our gun and we've got our shield potion, which we should probably drink up because we don't have any shield at the moment. Anyhow, so let's talk about how I built this and how the save device works currently as of 26.3. OK, we're inside of UEFN and I'm going to show you the setup of this so that everybody has a firm understanding of how this works. We've got our save device here and this is, can be found right inside of the devices. If you just look up save and then it'll show, show right there. That's the save point device. So we drag that in. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six triggers, a couple of uh, arrows, my game manager, these VFX spawners, which have the laser light show going. We've got our two spawners and our item granters here. Nothing special going on. And our checkpoints. So a checkpoint, if you've never used a checkpoint, is where you can have a player make it to a point and then if they get eliminated, something happens to them, they'll just respawn right there. So that's pretty handy. But what I really wanted to show is how you can have gold or even uh, over here we've got wood. So our resources, our shield, and our weapons, and it'll even save the location of the player if you so choose to. Let's take a look at the save device details panel. Now over here we can see we've got lots of little options in here. Now none of these are available yet inside of Verse. This is again 26.3 not available but we can use triggers. So that's what we're doing here. So kind of Creative 1.0 version of Creative 2.0. So we can have auto save, check that on. It'll save everything that you've got checked in here all the time. I don't know how often it saves. I think it saves it probably every second, maybe quicker. I have that turned off for this example. If you have it turned on, then you're going to just probably want to have auto load on as well. I also have that off so that I can load the data in manually, or you can have it the initial spawn or every spawn. Saving the loadout means you save all your weapons, uh, resources, obviously your resources, gold, Checkpoint is what I demonstrated earlier there. We can save the player location, uh, which is interesting because it will save the very last place the player was at. I had that turned off so that I could show how it saves checkpoints. Otherwise, if you have this turned on, then saving a checkpoint seems to be relatively pointless because it just puts the player back to wherever they were in the map. We can save the team, the class, and allow the player to clear the data. So we can have this enabled or disabled. Um, it's going to be, for me, gameplay only. 
Uh, save the health and shields, save a full ammo magazines, save a scoreboard stats and score and assists and all these things that are for your leaderboards. How to make this thing work? Because we can't use much of anything in verse. And the verse file is mostly me just setting up all the triggers, the VFX spawners, and uh, and then having them do a thing when a thing happens. It's really not that interesting. I will cover it a little closer in a second though. Okay, but inside of the details panel, when we want to save data, we got to use a trigger to do it. We can't do it with verse yet. I'm sure they're going to get to that. So I have a trigger that's a trigger safe player data, this one here. When that is triggered, it sets off the save player function inside of the save point device. We kind of might want to know when the data is saved. To do that, we need these triggers here, or we need one of them. We need this trigger here that's saved data. So for this trigger here, we say, okay, trigger this thing when the save point is activated. So on activation is when the player data is saved. So if you have a game that you save the data manually, because you won't really want to use this if you're saving automatically. I don't even know if it activates. Actually, I can't, I don't think it does. If you save manually, you might want to know, you might want to put a HUD up. You might want to say, oh, you saved all your data. Good job. Or something like that. So we want a trigger to get triggered because of that. So we can use a trigger to access the save point and then access on activation. Same thing for this one here, which is the cleared event. So the save point on cleared. And then this last one here is for on player loaded. So when the, the player's information is loaded, we can have this triggered, which will do a thing. And that thing currently is to just show a VFX. So these VFX here, uh, set off when those things happen. That's why you see the light show going on. Again, I'll cover that more in a sec. Back to the save device. When we want to load the information for the player, we'll again have a, a trigger do it. So when the trigger load player data, which is this one over here, is triggered, that's going to load the player data. So to have this thing work right now, we have to set up all of our triggers. Hopefully you guys have a pretty good idea that it's not available in verse. Now let's just cover what I did in verse so far anyways, just in case. And this is mostly just so I can see that it's working but we also might want to set things off when certain things happen. We've got our five trigger devices all set up as editables here, and you should know how to do this. If not, I've got a tutorial in the description that covers making editables and making your game manager file, because uh, this is the very basics of working with Verse, very important. So all of my triggers are very well named. Now this has evolved over time, but I find that I like to leave the beginning to be what the thing is. So if it's a trigger, it's this, if it's a button, it's whatever, if it's a conditional button, it's whatever. And then after that, an underscore and then what it does. So detect player cleared, it's a trigger device. Detect player load, detect player saved data. So these are all detection devices at this point. So when something happens, we then trigger these VFX devices here. And I'll show you that now. We have our triggers to do our loading and saving as well. These two triggers that live here when stepped on or shot or whatever or triggered. You can have a button. You can do anything. I'm just using triggers. When those get triggered, it tells the save device to do its thing. And then we have our VFX that get set off when that happens for a visual reference, because I thought I was going to have to upload this to the private unlisted kind of section. But uh, it turns out everything worked fine inside of the UAFN edit. Uh, session. So that was good. So on begin, we're going to set up our triggers here. Uh, we're subscribing to our on player clear data on loaded and on saved. And those live here. I'll show you a quick trick. I think it's kind of neat. Each one of these has their own function for when they get set off. Now I know I've covered in another tutorial that you should use a special subscribe to do this, but we're just going to use a normal subscribe because it's quick and easy for here. So on player clear data passes in uh, the agent because it's a trigger, but we don't need that here because the trigger actually passes the agent object into the save point device. So it knows which agent to clear. And then we'll say show VFX and uh, we'll send over the VFX clear device, which is this one over here. And so we send that into a show VFX function and save for the loaded ones. We're going to send in the VFX load. Uh, spawner device and the VFX save spawner device. So this is kind of a handy way to have one thing happen. And what we're doing is we're showing the VFX, whichever one it is, by passing it in and then saying right here, okay, whatever got passed in, enable it and then sleep for three seconds. 
and then disable it because we don't want the light show going on forever. And then um, the load and save ones don't do anything. They just show up a print. That's how that works. The, the save data device does seem to work. You can save information inside of your games now. You can do it auto, you can do it manual. It doesn't really matter, but it does seem to work and it'll save all kinds of information. Hopefully that's been interesting. If you have any questions, let me know. I might do a part two because there could be more to cover on this. And then when it comes out where it's available in verse and we don't have to use these triggers anymore, I'll make another tutorial and we'll talk about how to work with it in verse exclusively. So I expect that to come. Overall, it's good that it works. And uh, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys in the next one.